Hi everyone, this is Beyond Tutorials Part 3. Today I'm going to show you how to do AI and uh, make your character attack that AI component. So here I have a few extra menus that I didn't have in the previous tutorials. Um, you can make them. Uh, the skull enemy is my enemy icon. Um, I don't know if I have my punch icon in here, don't think I did in the last tutorial. You don't really need these, um, they're just for visual effects. You can make your enemy look like a square, a red square if you want to for just the purpose of the tutorial, but I use my enemies and um, my character for my own game. Um, for code, I made an enemy, empty enemy code, file, uh, empty player verb, file, empty player prog file, and turps we filled a tiny bit last tutorial. So I guess where I'll start with is the enemy. So to make an enemy, the enemy, there's, like I said, there's three trees, which I said in the last tutorial. Um, just to refresh, there's a mob, object, and turf. Turf is your grass, blah, 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 that type of stuff, the stuff that goes. Objects are usually what goes on top of the turfs, and mobs um, are your player characters, or computer playable characters. So our enemy will be a mob. And usually I do a subtree enemy, so the mob, the mob enemy is part of mob. And well, let's say the icon equals um, skull enemy. Uh, DMI uh, icon state equals skull. Okay, once we have that, um, we should start making variables that we plan to um, have in the game to calculate damage, to calculate all these things. But actually, let's first do it without any uh, formula. Let's first do it so when I attack this enemy, it just gets deleted. So this is um, very simple. So uh, let's go into player verb. So player verb, you want to make it so when the the player attacks the enemy, it just gets deleted straight out. So mob slash verb attack. Okay, so this is a bit new new things for people who don't, aren't used to the language. Um, a verb is an action. Uh, it's basically an action you can assign to a um, to a key or a, an output or an input. So I, I can make um, I can make it so when I press F, for example, my character will attack based on this this code. So um, I, I don't need to name it attack for those who are not familiar that familiar with coding. I, I could name this whatever I want, but it's it's good to name it things that you'll remember for the future. You don't want to call it elephant. You don't want to call it raccoon. You could you could, but you don't want to call it that. So, and now we'll get into a bit more advanced coding for some people who aren't, aren't used to this. So we'll do for mob slash enemy slash e. So basically what we're doing, well, I'll finish it. In get step circ circ doctor. Okay, so basically what this is saying is for mob enemy, um, the E right here, you there's something that Beyond needs, you need to be for mob enemy, I mean, declare um, the variable the enemy is equal to. So this E just stands for the variable, E just stands for mob slash enemy. That's what e, is, e stands for. You just need to assign mob slash enemy into a variable um, to make it work. So that's why the E is here. So for mob slash enemy in get step of circ. And circ circ is always equal to the tree you're under. So right now I am under the mob tree, which um 
the first most top tree, top tree of the mob. Um, everyone, everyone has. So, um, actually, I should reword that. That was that was a bit confusing. So, Zerk is equal to is equal to um, uh, current user of the code. So if I'm attack, oh oops. <laughs> uh. So if my if my player character is attacking, then he's the circ. If a mob or an enemy was to use this code, then he would be the circ. But since this code is going to be specific to players, a player is going to use this code. So circ equals the current user of the code. And in this case, it's the player because the player is going to be attacking. So circ is equal to who's ever using this bit of code. So Cirk, Cirk, the person who's attacking, um, and Cirk's direction. So this translates into four mob enemy is in the gets, is in the next step. And a step um, beyond is very tiled base. So basically um, one tile is 32 by 32, and it is talking about the next Step in the next tile from the position of um, from the position of the player to the player's direction. So basically, one tile in front of the direction that the player is facing. So this basically makes it so if an enemy is facing in the next tile, um, in the next tile from your direction, then this code will activate. I'm sorry if that's confusing. I'm it's kind of hard for people who don't aren't used to the language, but I hope I made it specific enough. I was kind of stuttering a bit to get my get my point across because it's kind of I don't really prep these things. I just make them as I go. Oh, oops. Um, so yeah, I hope that wasn't too confusing. So now when there's enemy in the next tile in front of our direction, um, the next code. Well, in size. And we can simply go delete E. So E, like I said, is a variable for mob slash enemy in the get step of the next direction ahead of us. So if those conditions, we got those conditions, then we delete the enemy. Oh, and look, I guess I made a mistake. And. Well, I spelled enemy wrong. In my skull, and then me. Oops. Oh well. So we have to just go with that spelling. Okay. And then we we'll go to the map. Let's just make this enemy somewhere. Boom. And now I don't. I can't. It's not assigned to a button yet. I'll quickly show you how to assign it to a button. Um, just shortly. But defaultly. It'll be a command right here, so you have to click on it. You attack, they should get deleted. So there's many ways you can use to respawn these enemies. I will show you a way. Currently in my game, what I'm doing is not actually deleting them, I'm making them go invisible. Yeah, that's basically my game currently, I'm making them go invisible in a state where no one can attack them, but they're still there, and then they turn uninvisible after a certain amount of time. I don't really like... I don't like to delete enemies for certain reasons. Oh, for certain reasons in my game, maybe in your game you want to delete enemies and that's okay. Um, I think there's a... Beyond, there's a function called repop, which repops all the things that have been deleted. And so... Yeah, I probably won't show you that method, but there is... Look up repop in the... Um, the Beyond references, and that might be able to get you somewhere. And I know there's a lot of tutorials, um, a lot of tutorials on it on the Beyond website. So close out of this, and I'll quickly show you how to macro that attack to the um, a control. So our verb name is called attack. So let's go to interface macro. We have a bunch of predefined macros, these are all for movement. I usually make my own custom movement later on, as you should too, because then you can mess around with your movement. 
um, but for now that's not really that important. Um, so find key, I recommend doing this to find the key you're using. I like to use F for attack. So F and the command for attacking um, was attack. And just press OK. And done. And then if you build it, you run it, press F, it gets deleted. Okay. Now I'm sure some of you guys want an animation, so I'm going through this really slowly, step by step, so you guys understand it. But let's get an animation in here. What I want to do is I want to put the animation before this this part of the code because you want it so he punches even if there isn't an enemy in front of him. You want to make it so he still makes the animation of a punch. So this can be done with Flick. What Flick does is it circles. It goes through an animation and then it reverts back to its previous animation after it's done the animation. So punch, um, and you need to define who is who is whose animation is getting flicked. So in this case, it's Cirque, and Cirque, remember, is equal to the person who is using the code. And the person who's using the code is the person who's attacking. So the person who is attacking, Cirque, is changing its icon to punch. When the icon is done, it reverts back to its previous icon. There we go. See, I can punch, make this animation for punch. Deletes them. There we go. So yeah, just to, I'm probably gonna end this tutorial soon because the next tutorial will be about variables and using health. I have a very basic um, variable I use to calculate damage. And I'll show you that probably next tutorial, but just refresh. Yeah, what the flick does is it goes to your punch. Uh, play them off. It goes to an icon of its name. Uh, where is it? So it goes to a circ. Circ's the player. So these are my icons available for the player. And then I, I said it goes to punch. So it goes through punch. Basically, what it goes is it goes to the entire punch. One, two, three, and once it gets to the end, it goes right back to its original icon, which is this. Um, so yeah, I'm going to end this tutorial because I think next tutorial with variables is just going to be um, a lot more information, and I'm going to have to make health bars, we're going to have to make all these different components that have to deal with um, damage output and a good representation for, for players to know when they're getting hurt. Um, I'm going to deal with um, numbers on top of your head, um, that's a popular one that a lot of people do where um, numbers go over your head to see how much damage you're doing, that can be very addictive, so you're like, yeah, I'm doing doing 45, yesterday I was doing 30, whatever, you know, a lot of people like those numbers, um, and a lot of Beyond games sadly don't have either of those, I've, I've played most Beyond games that don't even have a health bar, and that's just embarrassing because I... I can make a health bar in like 10 different ways, but I'll show you the um, what I find the best way to do it in the next tutorial. So I'll see you guys later, um, thanks for watching my tutorial, and I'll see you next time. See you.